Hallelujah.
this sanctuary there is a stillness in the atmosphere come and lay down the burdens you Help me sing this morning. There is a sweet come on, come on. Anointing in this sanctuary. I want to hear your voices. There is a stillness in the atmosphere. Oh, come and lay down. Don't you feel him in the building? Hallelujah, God is here. Thank you, God. Holy 
God, there are so many ways that we can declare your awesomeness. And there are many ways that we can describe your characteristics. But even when we think we have the right words, there will never be enough words to fully and adequately articulate who you are to us and how good you have been to us. But one of the ways that we seek to express our gratitude, one of the ways that we seek to express our thanksgiving is by intentionally taking time to come and be in your presence. By intentionally taking time to come and listen for you, to look for you, to experience you, and to have you breathe upon us anew and fresh and even more powerful ways. So as we gather in this place on this day, when churches around the country are commemorating and remembering, remembering a dreamer, Remind us, God, that the dream has yet to be completely fulfilled and that we are part of your dream makers to make it so. So our prayer is simple. Breathe on us, breath of God. Fill us with your life anew that we might truly love what you love and as you love and do as you've called and commissioned us to do. This is our prayer through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen and amen. Good morning, saints. I want to welcome you this morning to worship here at St. John's Metropolitan Community Church in the heart of Raleigh, North Carolina. We are blessed and excited that you have taken a time out on this day as we gather once again to worship our God in spirit and in truth. If you are visiting with us for the first time, we certainly want to extend to you a very personal welcome and greeting and invite you, if you've not had an opportunity to do so already, to pick up a copy of our welcome and information guide. It gives you further information about who we are here in this community of faith and how we believe God is continuing to groom and grow us as we seek to live out our call of proclaiming Christ, building community and transforming lives. I also hope that you picked up or you found in your bulletin a copy of our welcome card, which is what we use to maintain the statistical data on our members, regular attenders, and first-time guests. And so we invite you as you feel comfortable to complete the information on the front of the card. If there are prayer requests or messages you'd like to get to us today or throughout the week, you can note that on the back of the card. If you are a member or regular attender, we ask that you place the card in the offering basket during the offertory portion of worship. However, if you're with us for the first time, we want to encourage you and invite you to hold on to your card. And if you would meet with Pastor Carlton and soon to be Deacon Laura Gillerin, she's around here somewhere. There she is. Over here to my left after services today, we have a gift for you to let you know how blessed we are that God led you to be with us in worship today. Folk will tell you, I believe this with all my heart. If you're here for the first time, you're not here by accident. But we leave, it is as a result of an appointment, and we call those God's divine appointments with you. And so our prayer today is your heart might be open to everything God has for you, and in turn, your heart and our hearts might be blessed. We welcome you to worship at St. John's. The Sunday News highlights events and activities coming up in our community of faith, as well as some future events that are right around the corner. Before I get started, however, it is Children's Church Day. So I don't want to forget all the young people in our midst. The young people, not the young at heart, but all the young people in our midst. If you'll come on down here to my left and meet with Mr. Rick. Come on down here. Come on down. Come on down. Maybe Mr. Rick is going to sing for y'all something this morning. I don't know. We'll, we'll see how that goes. Amen. Pray for Mr. Rick. Show some love for the kids. <clears throat> We made an announcement of, yeah, come on, buddy, don't, come on, come on, come on, don't, don't, don't get left behind, come on, come on, there we go, we got it, we got it. We made an announcement last week with Vivian did about our community pot ministry, and so folk have been delivering foodstuffs back here, we want to encourage you, if you have foodstuffs to bring fresh vegetables, come and put those up there so we can continue this ministry, amen. Thank you, thank you, thank you for that. 
Um, between our 845 and our 11 o'clock service, we have a adult Sunday school that meets at 10 o'clock. It's called Two Time at 10, and they're currently looking at the character of Joseph. And so if you have time on Sunday mornings at 10 o'clock, they invite you to meet with Cindy and the group back there in the Friendship Hall as they take a journey with Joseph. Beginning at 2 o'clock this afternoon will be the first session of the Life Keys Leadership class. I hope everybody has done their homework for today. It should be a fascinating experience, but I look forward to seeing you this afternoon at 2 in the Friendship Hall because it is the Martin Luther King Jr. holiday. Do note that the church office will be closed on tomorrow. If you have messages or emergencies that come up and you need to be in touch with us, we ask that you call the church office and if you would, please leave a message on the general voicemail box that will be checked periodically throughout the day. Tuesday night Bible study will be commence on Tuesday. First session at 6.30. We meet here in the sanctuary. There's plenty of room. There's never too late to come to Tuesday night Bible study. We're focusing on discipleship one one, what it means to follow Jesus. And so come and join us on Tuesday at 6.30. Our next membership class will be on Saturday, February 1st at 9 o'clock. We'll run from 9 to about 2.30 or 3. If you know of inter individuals who are interested or if you yourself are interested in joining this community of faith, we ask that you call the church office or let David know so that we can make adequate preparations for lunch, which will be provided for you. Did you want to make an announcement? Come on, I don't want to forget you. Morning. Uh oh. That's you. Good morning. Okay, so we have kicked off Pumped Up Praise. It was awesome yesterday. We did a lot. Um, everybody, you sore, Calvin? <laughs> we did a lot. It was awesome. We had some some crunches over here. We had some some other ab work over here. We had jump rope and lunges and we were going up and down the stairs. We did some laps around the church. We did an awesome job. So I would encourage you, if you have time, make time to come out and be with us tomorrow morning, 9, 9 a.m. And I'm going to put it out. If you have an interest, come up to me. I don't have the paper to sign up today. I can get it though. I have the paper. I can get it. You can sign up. But tomorrow, tomorrow morning, 9 a.m., church office is not open. I can't help you but other than to make you tired. That's all I can do tomorrow for you. That's it. We're going to sweat. We're going to talk a little bit, and we're going to go home. 9 a.m. tomorrow, pumped up praise. Amen? Amen. And anyone is welcome to come. It's a wellness group and not a woman's group. So men, women, children, anyone can come. Amen? Oh, that's so good. Yeah, I like that. Thank you, ma'am. Tomorrow morning, 9 o'clock, I'll be praying for you. So the last announcement. <laughs> The last announcement that I have actually is two announcements. One from Fred Kennedy um, Service Ministry. Volunteers are needed for lunch boxes of love this Saturday. We're asking folks to meet here at the church at 10 o'clock. We'll be leaving from here at 11 to go downtown. So if you have some time this coming Saturday, you know how critical this ministry is, not only for us, but for the folk downtown. We ask that you come on, meet us up here at 10 o'clock on Saturday, and we'll go downtown and we'll share some love with the saints downtown. Children's Church next Saturday will be meeting at 1 o'clock on Saturday shortly after lunch boxes of love for a skate day out come out and support the children's ministry this is open to everyone the location is jelly beans near Wakefield in Wake Forest see Rick Grissom for further details or see the flyer posted on the bulletin board outside so skates lunch boxes of love next Saturday come on out and join the fun I hope Great, and pray that's it for the announcements for today. So as we continue in worship, I want to invite you now, respecting the boundaries of those around you, to greet one another with the love, peace, and joy of Jesus Christ.
day by day and week by week basis. Certainly want to lift up all of those around this country who are commemorating the MLK Jr. weekend and holiday. Lots of events and lots of activities. And my prayer every year is that these events and activities are not done in vain, but they're done for a purpose and they're done with a reason. And that is that we know that the dream is not completely fulfilled until there's a place for everybody. And we will continue to work toward that beloved community. I want to lift up all of those who are sick, particularly those who are dealing with this cold flu bug thing um, that's going around. Um, Vance texted us this morning. He is actually at home very sick. And so we need to lift him up in prayer. My aunt actually contracted it from her over there. And so, um, <laughs> so <laughs> pray for all of those. Uh, who, who are sick and, and journeying through this place. As we said before, if you think you have a cold, or if you think you have the flu, do us a favor. Stay home. We will pray for you. We will love, for, love you from a distance. Send your tithes and your offerings. <laughs> amen. Because ministry still happens. Amen. We know we'll pray for you. For all of those who are in the hospital and homebound or who are in various levels or degrees of healing in their own lives, for those who are traveling, we thought that Robbie was going to be back this week, but he has an extended stay in Texas, and so we want to continue to pray for him. <laughs> and all of those who are impacted by it, amen. <laughs> and pray for Edgar's mom. Edgar tried to be in touch with his mom, I guess, recently. He was not able to get through to her, and so we want to pray for mom that she's safe and that she's doing okay. And I want to certainly lift up the entire country of Nigeria. Um, we need to pray for our people in Nigeria, particularly our LBGTQQI folk who are being arrested, who are being tortured, who are being killed um, by authorization of the government because of who they are. Um, we do have one of our clergy people over there, Jude McCauley, and Jude is working feverishly to try to save as many lives as he possibly and humanly can. And so we pray for him, we pray for our church, and we pray that justice might be done. Um, as we know and we believe in this place that each and every human being is made in the image of God. And we're all sacred, and no one has a right to take anybody's life for any reason. And so we need to pray for our Nigerian brothers and sisters as they go through this difficult time in their life journey. With that said, I want to invite us now to join in our call to prayer. gracious, loving, merciful creator, you have blessed us once again by waking us up this morning, God. So God, we just say thank you. God, thank you for giving us second chances. Thank you for allowing us to learn from our mistakes. Thank you for sending saints before us, God, like Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr., who had the strength and courage to stand up for what you called him to do, be Christ with skin on. And God, allow us to see and draw strength from people like him so that we too can reach out to those who are the least of these in your communities. 
of God, there's a lot of fighting going on. And sadly, there's still countries that are being persecuted for being and accepting who they are as your created sons and daughters, as created beings made in your image, God. God, we lift up those who have been hurt, those who are still fearful for their lives. God, we ask that you allow your peace, your vision, your love to be in the hearts of those who are ruling over, who are scared enough to not allow people to just be who they are. God, you are the creator, the one who can shine light in the darkness, Lord. So God, we just ask that your light be shined in those dark places. God, we have a lot of this community who are still fighting illness, be it physical, spiritual, emotional. We have a lot who are going through this cold and these viruses. A lot in this state who are dying from flu or are close to dying from flu. And some people that are weighing on our hearts that we can't get in touch with to know that they're okay. So God, we lift up those that are on our hearts, lift up those who are not here today, like Vance. God, we ask that your healing spirit be upon them during this time. God, we ask that you provide peace and rest to Auntie and Vance and those that are close to us, those who are <clears throat> starting to come down with these viruses, God. Give them the strength and peace and healing touch to discern when to rest and discern how to heal and take care of themselves during this time. God, we still have a lot of this community who are out on the streets and it's still cold. We have a lot of this country that has been affected by the blizzards and by the strong winds. God, we just ask that your healing touch beyond this country as it continues to go through these winter storms. And God, we'd also like to lift up our sister Laura on this day. As she has followed your calling like people like Dr. King. God, we just ask that you allow this community to touch her and inspire her to continue to follow in her calling. Allow her light to be an inspiration to us to continue on your calling, to reaching out to the broken, to the hurt. So God, as we come to continue to worship you, we just ask that you open up our hearts once more. That as the pastor preaches your word, God, may those words fill our hearts with the wisdom and nourishment we need to continue to light your world in this community. God, we lift all these things in Christ's holy and precious name.
The scripture reading for this morning is taken from the Gospel of John. Chapter 4, verses 7 through 26. John chapter 4, verses 7 through 26. I'll be reading from Eugene Peterson's The Message. You can also find it printed in your bulletin on pages 8 and 9. Here we find these words. A woman, a Samaritan, came to draw water. Jesus said, would you give me a drink of water? His disciples had gone to the village to buy food for lunch. The Samaritan woman, taken aback, asked, how come you, a Jew, are asking me, a Samaritan woman, for a drink? Jews in those days would be caught dead talking to Samaritans. Jesus answered, If you knew the generosity of God and who I am, you would be asking me for a drink, and I would give you fresh, living water. The woman said, Sir, you don't even have a bucket to draw with, and this well is deep. So how are you going to get this living water? Are you a better man than our ancestor Jacob, who dug this well and drank from it, he and his sons and livestock, and passed it down to us? Jesus said, everyone who drinks this water will get thirsty again and again. Anyone who drinks the water I give will never thirst, not ever. The water I give will be an artisan spring within, gushing fountains of endless life. The woman said, sir, give me the water so I won't ever get thirsty, won't ever have to come back to this well again. He said, Go call your husband and then come back. I have no husband, she said. That's nicely put. I have no husband. You've had five husbands. And the man you're living with now isn't even your husband. You spoke the truth there. Sure enough. Oh, so you're a prophet? Well, tell me this. Our ancestors worshiped God at this mountain. But you Jews insist that Jerusalem is the only place for worship, right? Believe me, woman, the time is coming when you Samaritans will worship God neither here at this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You worship guessing in the dark. We Jews worship in the clear light of day. God's way of salvation is made available through the Jews. But the time is coming. It has, in fact, come when what you're called will not matter and where you go to worship will not matter. It is who you are and the way you live that counts before God. Your worship must engage your spirit in the pursuit of truth. That's the kind of people God is out looking for. Those who are simply and honestly themselves before God in their worship. God is sheer being itself, spirit, Those who worship God must do it out of their very being, their spirits, their true selves and adoration. The woman said, I don't know about that. I do know that the Messiah is coming. When he arrives, we'll get the whole story. I am he, said Jesus. You don't have to wait any longer or look any further. I would lift up for us to consider this morning the subject, the look of authentic worship, the look of authentic worship. And if there is a subtitle, the subtitle would be this, The Power of God-Fearing and Christ-Centered Worship. The Power of God-Fearing and Christ-Centered Worship worship. So God, in these moments, we push a pause button on everything around us that it might stop and we might be still in your presence to listen for you, to receive from you only that which you can give 
So it is our prayer that you would break open the written word once more, O God, and that you would write its sacred truths upon our hearts and that as you do so, those truths may not just remain there, but those truths might so transform us that we can't help but be compelled not only to embody this divine truth, but to share it wherever you lead us. Speak to us now, we pray. In the name of Christ, amen. amen. The conversation between Jesus and the Samaritan woman at Jacob's well is one of the high points of John's gospel message. For included in this conversation is an invaluable revelation about the nature of authentic worship. Now, I would submit to us it is important for us to note that this encounter did not take place in some quiet, remote place, but rather this was an encounter between Jesus and the Samaritan woman right in the middle of town in broad daylight for everyone to see and possibly over here. What is interesting is the scripture tells us that Jews didn't associate with Samaritans, so the fact that Jesus was talking to her was problematic enough, but the fact that he was doing it in broad daylight for everybody to see, there was something happening in the midst of that conversation that certainly would be revealed not only to the Samaritan woman, but ultimately would be revealed to us. And this, I would suggest, is the power and the glory and the beauty of the divine truth that God truly is no respecter of persons. God will meet you right where you are, wherever you are, whenever God feels like the time is right to meet you, even when the culture says you should not be talking to those people. There's something to be gained by this conversation that happens between Jesus and the Samaritan woman that gives us ongoing good news for us today. Part of that good news is about understanding that this gospel message that has been trusted to us, this message of love, care, passion, and compassion, this is a message that is not ours to hoard. It is ours to share, and it's not just for some people. It's for everybody. That includes you, and that includes me. And so this conversation happens at a well. And as this conversation unfolds, there is a revelation that comes. If you take a closer look at this story, no doubt the Samaritan woman from the beginning tries to change the subject as Jesus starts to probe into her life. You know, if you have a conversation with somebody they're trying to ask you something, you know where they're going, so you change the subject before they get there. I think the, the Samaritan woman has some idea as to where Jesus probably is going to take her, and so she tried to be one step ahead of him and, and try to change the subject. No doubt this question that was probably evaded then, as much as it evaded now, is where is the proper place to worship? It is a fascinating conversation to me. When we talk with people, when I talk with folk who talk about their various places of worship, their various spiritual houses, and how there's something particular that needs to happen when you come together to worship. Everybody has their uniquenesses, amen. And if anybody has got a whole slew of uniquenesses, Christian folk got a whole bunch of uniquenesses. We got to be this way, we got to be this way, we got to sing this way, we got to pray this way, we got to act this way, we got to dance this way. Because if you ain't got to dance, something up. If you don't speak in tongues, something up. I actually heard it said in this place. If you don't speak in tongues, you haven't been saved. But we took care of that. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. Amen. We have this, 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 this notion that there is some place special that we're called to work, where we're called to worship. And we have to have a particular posture to worship. And we have to look a particular way to worship. When the reality was, if you see what, what happens with Jesus and the Samaritan woman, Jesus met this woman at the well just as she was. An outcast, someone who was not to be spoken to. And Jesus went right up to her and said, look, I'm thirsty. Can I get some water from you? She says, you would ask me, you a Jew, would ask me a Samaritan woman for, for a drink of water? In that very instant, the Samaritan woman failed to recognize that in the very question Jesus asked her, he was opening up an opportunity for her to experience the divine revelation that God indeed was present and God was in her midst. 
So she changes the subject. She's like, look, you ain't got no bucket. The well is deep. How you going to get some water? Jesus said, if you knew the water that I gave. I don't, have to, I don't have to go in this way. If you knew what I was giving you to drink, you wouldn't have to worry about going into that well anymore. Because that which I'm about to give you is a river spring gushing up, artisan spring, gushing up that gives you life upon life upon life upon life upon life. Check the image out. She says to Jesus, how are you going to get water out of this well? You don't even have a bucket. Here's a teachable moment. The look, one of the looks of authentic worship is you must be humble. You must be humble. Why do I say that? You see, if Jesus had had a bucket, Jesus would have to have bowed down and gone deep into the well to get the water. When we come to worship God, we're called to bow down and to drink deep of the waters of the Spirit. And sometimes we miss the opportunity to experience that authentic worship because we're busy changing the subject. We have to be able to open up ourselves and say, here I am to worship. Here I am to bow down. Here I am to say that you are God. And when we sing those songs, and when we hear those songs, and we hear those words, it should literally compel us just to bow, to experience the presence of God and drink and drink from the well. Jesus said to her, if you knew the water I was trying to give you, you would never thirst again. And how many, how many brothers and sisters around the globe are sitting in spiritual houses of worship who are still thirsty because they have yet to come to understand that in order to get to the well, it requires something of you. It requires something of you, a humble posture is the first look of authentic worship. The second look of authentic worship is one must be fully transparent. Let me say that again. The second look of authentic worship is one must be fully, fully transparent, fully exposed if you will, you have to be naked before the Lord. You see, while we sitting here looking all pretty, all dressed up, looking all suave, <laughs> amen. The truth of the matter is, God is looking through all of this and going right to the heart of the matter because it's at the heart of the matter that not only salvation occurs, but transformation occurs, and the possibility that life can look different for you can occur. But what that requires of us is that we be real with God. How many folk come to church week after week? I ain't trying to pick on nobody. But come on to church week after week, and we sit here, and we sit here, and we sit here, and God ain't moved, and God ain't moved, and God ain't moved. We wonder why God ain't moved. And God said, you ain't been real with me yet. You've not been honest with me. You've not told me the truth. Be real with me. For in that realness comes the revelation. And in the revelation comes grace. In the revelation comes mercy. In the revelation comes freedom. In the revelation you experience the depth of divine love. Jesus says to this woman, go get your husband. Go on, go on, get him. Now you know she had to stop for a second. Well, you see, Jesus, you see what happened was, I really don't have a husband. And Jesus is like, well, yeah, yeah, you told the truth there for the first time. Truth be told, you don't have five of them. 
And the one you're living with ain't your husband. As Peter said, you showed total truth there. Now, what happens after that exchange? The woman says, we've been told that Messiah is coming. We're going to worship. We're going to bow down. And we're going to worship what? On this mountain. Here we get twisted again. In her mind, she was led to believe that only this mountain, Mount Gerizim, was the only place where that worship could take place. That was the only place that they could experience God and encounter God. She, was, she had that in her mind. And Jesus said, you worship what you don't know. We are so quick to say we can only get what we need right here. They got Jesus up in the house. I can only get what I need right there. When the reality is wherever you plant your feet, the possibility of the revelation of God is there. It is in your midst. It is before you. And Jesus says to the woman, the time will come when you will worship God neither on this mountain nor the other. But wherever you worship God, wherever you worship God, you must do it in spirit and in truth. You must do it in spirit and in truth. Not a contrived spirit. Not a made-up spirit, not a spirit of your past, not a spirit of your other church, not a spirit of your other bishop, not a spirit of your other car, but your spirit encounter with God that is rich, that is genuine, that is real, and that is just as different for the people in this space. For some folk, it's like, like Jeremiah had that encounter. It's like a fire shut up in your bones. You just can't sit still. You've got to do something with it. For some folk, it is about dancing like David. For some folk, it is shouts of praise. For some folk, it is sitting as quietly and serenely and just breathing in the serene presence of an almighty God who breathes on you and breathes on you to such intensity that tears run down the side of your face. Jesus says those who worship must worship in spirit and in truth, and what I've come to understand is for some of us, we have difficulty getting to God because we have yet to tell the truth to God about who we are, what we're about, what we done done, what we ain't done, and what we need to do, and God's like, until you do, I can't do. Until you make that up, I can't do. But I will be here. I will be here for you. I will invite you to understand what is required of you. That you unzip the pretense. And you let the full person come out. So that when you open up your eyes, I won't see you, but I'll see the God in you. That will lead us to a place where we can't help but say, thank you, God for being as good as you are to me. One of the realities, I think, in in the church that we have to deal with and the church that we try to do here, hopefully in other places, is we try to give individuals an opportunity to understand who God is for his or herself. That means we have to have a hunger. We have to have a hunger to want to be in relationship with God. We have to have a hunger to spend time with God. That we do things like, I'm just saying, I ain't trying to pick on nobody. Um, But we do things like maybe bring a Bible to church. I'm just saying. You know, okay, iPad, you know, iPhone, I don't know, some people use like electronics. But we have some way to be present with the preacher. Hello. Because the preacher is going to take us somewhere and hopefully y'all go on with the preacher. And I also know that some preachers that's taking us places we shouldn't have gone. But how would you know unless you spend time with God? A part of worshiping God in spirit and in truth is spending time with the one who wants all of you and not just part of you. Here is this Samaritan woman. Somebody's phone is buzzing. Here is this Samaritan woman. And she is there before the one who is the Messiah. And as he presses her and as he pushes her and as he challenges her, she makes a very profound and prophetic utterance. She said, somebody told us the Messiah is coming. And what does Jesus say to her? <laughs> hey, that's it. Sister, it's me. 
What's the point? The third look of authentic worship is making sure that you look for God with spiritual eyes and not your own. It's very easy. It is very easy to get confused, to get twisted, to get upset when we start to work out our spiritual journey on our own terms. Let me say that again. Because, see, I can say that because I used to do that. It's very dangerous when we seek to work out our own spiritual journey on our own terms. Martin Luther King Jr. said decades ago that Sunday morning at that time, at 11 o'clock, was the most segregated hour in this country. 11 o'clock Sunday morning. Most segregated hour in this country. Segregated by race. Dare I say, in local communions, separated by gender. Separated by sexual orientation, even though the choirs were full. Amen. Amen. <laughs> it, amen. amen. Separated by age, economic status, educational status. In many ways, it was the most segregated hour. Yet here is the example of Jesus who goes to this woman that he is not supposed to be in relationship with and in broad daylight invites her, an outcast, a nobody, a woman who has no name, to come and drink from the well. Now, if Jesus can invite her to come drink from the well, what keeps us from wanting to come and drink from that same well? What keeps us from wanting to be in that place, in that posture of humility? To be humble before a God who gave everything for you and me. Everything for you and me. Everything for you and me. And all God asks of us is to simply worship me in spirit and in truth. In spirit and in truth. Here's the fourth look of authentic worship. I thought it was three, but it's the fourth one. And the fourth one is this. What you do in church should be modeled outside of church. The look or what you get in church, you should model outside. Because there are others who are looking for this well just like the Samaritan woman. And we are the ones who can point them to the well. We are the ones who can point them to living waters. And for brothers and sisters, even those I think now who are in Nigeria suffering for living in their truth, we have a responsibility in this country to do what is incumbent upon us as followers of Christ to let others know that God loves you as though you're the only person in the universe to love. And that love never changes. Because of that, we stand in awe of God. What is God fearing worship? God fearing worship is that worship that says, you are awesome. You are all that and a bag of chips. And I am who I am, and I can be who I can be legitimately, transparently, and without apology because of your love for me. It honors the divinity of God. It honors the divine that lives in you. And when we seek to do that, we place ourselves right in the center of Jesus Christ who leads us. What is that song called? He walks with me and he talks with me. He tells me I'm his own. How thirsty are you? How thirsty are you? Are you willing to come to the well? And are you willing to humble yourselves before the Lord and open up all of who you are? Warts and all. Hear me, warts and all. Because God takes all of that and transforms it into an incredible miracle that becomes ministry 
that you're called to be about? How are you looking today? How are you looking today? My prayer is that you will always remember that wherever you go, there's an opportunity to worship. That wherever you are, you can worship God in your car, in your bathroom, in the shower, at the kitchen table. You can worship God. And wherever you do that, may you do it in the spirit of God. And may you do it in the truthfulness of who you are. That's the breath that you breathe. God's breath. Those who worship God will worship in spirit and in truth. How honest are you being with God? Once again today, it is a blessing for me on behalf of the Board of Directors and you, this community of faith, to present to you this individual who has responded to God's call to serve in the ministry and office of the diaconate. On this day, she believes, with the affirmation of the Board of Directors, that she has been called by God to serve you, St. John's Metropolitan Community Church and is now ready to be elevated and commissioned to serve in this ministry. And so on this day, we present her to you for the rite of blessing as she embarks on this new journey of faith and service, as she presents herself to God and to you for this office. Let us all covenant together to offer to her our continued prayers, our support and encouragement that she may be able to boldly passionately and faithfully serve this body of Christ all to the glory of God. It is now my honor to call forward Laura Gillery. a journey for her to get to this moment. And it's an honor for me to be standing here with you. And I'm also very mindful of the one who first ended your life when you came here that got you on the path. And I know she's here too. Lord, you have been called to be a servant of Christ and a deacon to join with the pastors of this community of faith and the pastoral work, spiritual support and nurture of this congregation. To you, I remind you once more of the words from scripture that has led you to this moment. Jesus, in the Gospel of Mark, reminds us that whoever wishes to be great among you must be your servant, and whoever wishes to be first among you must first be servant of all. For the Son of Humanity came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life a ransom for many. Likewise, in 1 Timothy 2, we find these words, deacons must be serious, not double-tongued, not indulging in much wine, not greedy for money. They must hold fast to the mystery of the faith with a clear conscience, and then let them first be tested. Then if they prove themselves blameless, let them serve as deacons. And finally, in 2 Timothy 2.15, we find these words, do your best to present yourself to God as one approved by God, a worker who has no need to be ashamed, rightly explaining the word of truth. You, Laura, 
have been called by God to serve God in this community of faith through this ministry. As those who have been approved, elevated, and appointed to serve with and minister to the body of Christ known as St. John's NCC, I ask you now, is it your desire to enter into and fulfill this ministry for the glory of God? If so, please say it is. Will you be a steadfast disciple of Jesus Christ, patterning your life in accordance with the teachings of Christ so that you may be a wholesome example to God's people? If so, please say, I will. Will you covenant to faithfully use the time, talents, and treasures God has so blessed you with in this ministry? And will you likewise covenant to live in and under the spiritual disciplines of the Christian faith so that you may continue to grow in this ministry of service? If so, please say, with God's help, I will. Do you commit to uphold the vision and mission of St. John's Metropolitan Community Church and the Universal Fellowship of Metropolitan Community Churches, accepting its order, doctrine, and discipline? If so, please say, I do. I do. Do you commit to give of yourself diligently and faithfully to this ministry of service that we know as the diaconate? If so, please say, with God's help, I do. With God's help, I do. Members of St. John's NCC as a community of faith, committed to participate in the life and ministry of St. John's NCC by your prayers, your presence, your service, as well as your tithes and your offerings, will you commit to support and uphold Laura in prayer in this ministry to which she has been called that we as the body of Christ may be ever faithful to our calling in Christ? If so, please say, we do. Thank you. Laura? Laura? I'm going to invite... Deacon, uh, deacons, deacon candidates, boards of directors. Laura has extended family that she has called to be here with her, to lay hands on her, so we're going to call them up. Touch and agree. Gathered community, I would invite you now to extend your right hand forward, sending your energy this way as we lay hands on and pray for our sister. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, on this day, we present to you your child, Laura, who has been chosen to serve you in this community of faith as a deacon. By your Holy Spirit, give her the grace through which she shall fulfill with devotion the duties and opportunities of this divine calling. Grant her, God, wisdom to rightly administer the spiritual affairs of your people. May she be ever open to minister to the needs of all of those, especially the needs of the hungry and the homeless, the sick and the sorrowing, the fearful and the lonely, the least, the last, and the lost, as well as all of those who find life's burdens too heavy to bear. To this service, and in the name of the one who came not to be served, but to serve, we ask your divine blessings upon her and now set her apart this day as your servant among servants in this community. Lord, may God bless you and keep you. May God's face shine upon you. May God who called you to this ministry give you the grace and power to perform this service faithfully, that the work blossoming in you and the work blossoming in this community of faith may bear much fruit and extend the reign of God on earth as it is in heaven. May God look upon you now and always with God's favor and divine peace. Amen. Amen. Congratulations, my sister. We have a tradition in our community of faith where deacon candidates wear the color purple during their candidacy period and once they are set aside and elevated they receive a white censure so make this be your sign of your new ministry share some love share some love share some love hug therapy here real, real well because it's important that we 
share in the goodness and the grace of our God in our midst. As we say all the time, God has specifically called each and every human being to a particular ministry. And it's up to us not only to discover what that is, but to say, here am I, Lord. Use me. Listen for the voice of God. Seek after that direction. And live in the yes. There's joy. There's peace. And there's power there. And it's lots of fun because we get to do it together. Amen. for all of the blessings that we get from you each day that we get to witness other people experience each day now God we wish to return to you a mere portion of that through our gifts of offerings and tithes we pray God that you will take these gifts and that you will multiply them and use them and use us so that we can further your will and help people know that you love them just as they are for who they are and that they are worthy God Thank you, God. In Christ's name, amen. Amen. My brothers and sisters, as we gather once more around this table, I want to remind you that in metropolitan community churches, we affirm, celebrate, and offer an open communion for this table represents the fullness of God's unconditional love for all of God's people is demonstrated through the life, ministry, death, and resurrection of the Christ. So on this day, we invite you to come just as you are to share God's table, being nourished by the bread of life and the cup of salvation. This table is open and prepared for you. On the night that he was to be handed over to suffering and death, Jesus, during a meal in the upper room, took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you, do this in remembrance of me. After the supper, he took the cup of the fruit of the vine, and when he had given thanks to you, he gave it to them and said, drink this, all of you. This is the cup of the new and everlasting covenant sealed in my blood, which is shed for you and for the world for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Let us pray. Loving God, we ask once more for you to pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and the fruit of the vine. By your presence, make sacred this feast that they may become for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Let us proclaim the mystery of our faith, that Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ is here. Christ will come again. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. You are invited as the ushers direct to receive the gifts of bread and fruit of the vine from one of the communion servers, followed by a prayer of blessing. If you would like to receive communion without a prayer of blessing, you may do so at the station to my far right. 
We request that you observe the sacredness of this time as others receive the Holy Eucharist through song, prayer, and meditation. Let's all come together now and let's celebrate the feast. God of grace, we give you thanks once more for this holy mystery you have provided for us through the fruit of the vine and the wheat of the field. Thank you for renewing us at your table by the presence of the Christ. Thank you for the bread of life that sustains all creation. As we prepare to leave this place, may your love continue to surround us and inspire us to live more fully for you, that we might rejoice as your servants to the world. This we ask in the name of Jesus the Christ. Amen. Amen. As we prepare to leave, I want you to hear these first four verses of that John chapter that talked about earlier now when Jesus learned that the fair when Jesus learned that the Pharisees had heard Jesus is making and baptizing more disciples than John although it was not Jesus himself but the disciples who baptized he left Judea and started back to Galilee but he had to go through Samaria why did I raise that 
we're going to go back out into God's world today. Yes. We're going to go as humbled individuals. We're going to go as transparent individuals. We're going to go out and show and model for others what it means to authentically and generally worship God. But in our quest to do that, know that God will lead us some places that we don't necessarily want to go. <laughs> Come on. Sometimes you've got to go where God leads you. That's right. But know when God leads you there, there's an appointment waiting for you. Seek to be open to meet that appointment. Seek to be open to be used by God. Seek to be open to lead someone else to the well where they too can experience living waters. And as you do, May the favor and the blessings of God continue to pour out on you. May your steps be ordered by the Spirit of God. And may your very witness not only strengthen you, but provide strength for those who are around you. Yes. And until we meet again in this place, allow these words to minister to your heart, to your spirit, and to your soul. I am, I am God's beloved, God's beloved, deeply loved, deeply richly loved, gifted, richly highly gifted, favored, highly abundantly favored, blessed. Abundantly Turn to your neighbor and say, you are, you are God's beloved, God's beloved deeply, loved, deeply loved, richly gifted, richly highly gifted, favored, highly abundantly favored, blessed. blessed. We are, we God's are, beloved, God's deeply loved, loved deeply richly loved, gifted, richly highly favored, favored abundantly blessed. blessed. Embrace the promise of going peace as we sing together. Can't nobody do me like Jesus. Oh!